Greetings to all, and welcome to the Jamaica Diaspora Show. My name is Mark Millward of the West Indian Social Club of Hartford, and I'm your host. The Jamaica Diaspora Show is aimed at providing viewers with coverage of diaspora news and activities in a variety of areas, including business, arts, health, education, entertainment, politics, immigration, trade, and investment. Our first show featured an exclusive interview with the most honorable Andrew P. Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica, who talked about the Economic Growth Council and harnessing the power of the diaspora. Tune in for more coverage in the future on the activities of the Economic Growth Council and diaspora engagement. Hartford, Connecticut is the third largest population of Jamaicans in the United States behind Miami and New York. We intend to provide our viewing audience with global diaspora perspectives and coverage from the US, UK, Canada, Jamaica, and of course the Caribbean. Please join us weekly, Saturdays at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. on Hartford Public Access Television, providing global television network coverage at www.hpatv.org. Greetings to all and welcome to the Jamaica Diaspora Show. Today I have an honored guest. I'm extremely honored to have uh, Dr. Robert Clark, who is the president and founder of Help Jamaica Medical Mission, and he is also the executive vice president of the National Association of Jamaican and Supportive Organizations. Welcome, Dr. Clark. Nice having me. Uh, very honored to be here. Okay. And uh, so, so Dr. Clark, um, I, I, there's something I have to mention that Dr. Clark is the cousin of uh, Congresswoman Yvette Clark yes. and the nephew of, of uh, is it Una, Una Clark? Una Clark. Una Clark. Uh -huh. So this is, I have to mention this because that's a lot of intellectual power. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, 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 I, it's evident that it does run in a family. Absolutely. Uh, yes. So, uh, Yes. I'm very, very pleased to have you here. Thank you. Uh, you are Jamaican, but where were you born in Jamaica? Um, I was born in what I usually call the capital of Kingston, mm -hmm. and that's Trenchtown. Okay. Um, I was indeed born in Trenchtown. I lived in Trenchtown for many years mm -hmm. and uh, actually attended basic school in Trenchtown, mm -hmm. from basic school to primary school mm -hmm. in Trenchtown, mm -hmm. Trenchtown Primary School, mm -hmm. and then to Trenchtown High School, mm -hmm. and um, that's where uh, I lived and did all my studies. Okay, so so your your actual uh, um, school years were, were all in Trenchtown, and then from there you went to college. Uh, well, I, I actually went to Kingston uh, Technical uh, Extension, where I did my A levels at the time, mm -hmm. and prior to me migrating to the United States. So. Where did you get your interest in medicine? Because I, d I did mention that you were a medical, yes, I said a medical doctor. Yes. Uh, well, that's, an, that's interesting because initially I did not want to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, well, at the age of, of about six, mm -hmm. I was actually fascinated with airplanes. And I actually wanted to become a pilot. I wanted to fly one of those big birds, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, each time one would fly over, I would stop and look and, you know, I said, boy, I would love to fly one of those um, someday. And um, I held that uh, dream for about four or five years until uh, I broke my hand. I broke my hand while I was climbing a wall, but I wasn't being rude, actually. I was trying to go to see my brother because I was in a Trenchstone primary. My brother was at Trenchstone High. So I was climbing the wall to go over to see my brother, and then I fell off that wall, I broke my hand. And so the school actually called my mother to, to take me to the hospital. She came, 
and she brought me to the children's hospital at the time. And being the last of four kids then, I was very spoiled, so I kept crying. And um, I wouldn't let the doctor um, put a cast on my hand. Um, I, I was in pain, and I just wouldn't cooperate. And so the doctor, being the genius that he was at the time, um, he actually found a method to let me stop fidgeting and crying. And he calmed me down. He gave me a stethoscope. There was some animal on it, and I was fascinated with that animal and the stethoscope. And before you knew it, he put the cast on my hand. And ever since then, I said, wow, how did he do that? I was surprised when I looked, I saw, I saw a cast on my hand. And ever since then, all I wanted to do was to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I, I was about 11, 10, 11 years old at the time. And ever since then, you know, I was just focused on becoming a physician. Wow. That's, a, that's, a, that's an unusual <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, experience yes. Yes. to, uh, you know, get uh, that uh, yes. inspiration. Yes. Um, so you migrated to the United States in what year or how old were you? I migrated, I think I was about 21 years old at the time. And um, I came and went straight to college. Mm -hmm. I uh, did undergrad and then I did, did medical school and then here I am. So where did you do your undergrad? Uh, Seton Hall University. Seton Hall? In, in, in New Jersey, yes. yes. And uh, so what years, what, what years were that? Did you, what year did you graduate there? Oh, you want people to know my age? No. Okay, <laughs> all right. Just okay. give us some time <laughs> frames. <laughs> all right, well, um, uh, 1989 to 93 is when mm -hmm. I did undergrad. Okay. So now, I understand how you got the idea to to become a doctor, mm -hmm. but w what were the people that were inspirational for you in, in growing up? Well, um, I had quite a number of role models at the time. Mm -hmm. um, um, Professor Rex Nuggerford was one of the most genius that I knew in Jamaica. And, um, Did you actually meet him? I actually met him. Uh -huh. I actually met him once um, at the dance theater, and um, you know, he he to me was a genius, and I, I, I really wanted to um, become another genius mm -hmm. like him, um, even though he was not in the field. But I think that even though it wasn't medicine, it, it he taught you how to excel at what you. did did whatever you whatever exactly it is you were doing and um, if you're going to be uh, this dishwasher in life then be the darnest <laughs> best dishwasher that there is mm -hmm. I mean anything that you do you got to put a hundred percent in it mm -hmm. and just excel at what you do mm -hmm. and that's one of the, the, um, the things that I actually learned from him you know just by watching him over the years Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and stuff like that. And also, um, I followed my aunt's career over the years as mm -hmm. well, and she has also been an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, I was also <laughs> at one point involved in one of her campaigns, and uh, I, I kind of learned how things were done and, mm -hmm. and saw how she, she got things done. And, 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 and saw her leadership skills and, and, and really I was very moved by it for her being a woman and actually being the first um, Caribbean American woman to be a council person in New York. It was a very good feat and mm -hmm. uh, I really admire her for that mm -hmm. and I've learned a lot mm -hmm. from her journeys mm -hmm. um, to becoming that first um, female representative. Mm -hmm. Now, the, your cousin, uh, Ev Congresswoman Yvette Clark. Mm -hmm. Now, w how are you in, in age range? Or I mean, you you guys are within. The uh, you don't have to say what age, but see, what, what's the range? I mean, you one year, two. <laughs> how many? I see you. You gone back to the same age thing, but yeah. you know what? We are practically the same. We're, oh, okay. we're she's my first cousin. So you grew up together. Yes, so, we yeah, yeah. pretty much so, grew up together. Okay. And, Mm -hmm. You know, she has always been very serious female. Mm -hmm. She always did very well at whatever mm -hmm. she put her mind to. And as a woman, she would not be bullied by no mm -hmm. man, by nothing. You know, mm -hmm. she was all, ever since I knew her, she's been a strong mm -hmm. and positive female, you know. Mm -hmm. And I knew that someday 
uh, she would get mm -hmm. to where she is. In fact, you know, she has qualities uh, as far as running for president. Mm -hmm. and I would love for her to do that someday. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening, Yvette, mm -hmm. please. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Um, so uh, having been in the United States, for how many years have you been in the United States? 30 now? plus years. Okay. Have you, do you have, a, have any aspirations of returning back to Jamaica? Absolutely. Yeah. Jamaica is the land of my birth, and mm -hmm. um, I am always had that returning home mentality. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I've gone to Jamaica several times, mm -hmm. many, many times since I've been here, because I figure that my, a lot of my loyalty rests there, mm -hmm. and we're not um, as fortunate as other countries, rich countries in terms of our resources. And I think mm -hmm. that if every Jamaican would give back mm -hmm. to Jamaica, not, you know, I'm not saying they turn their backs on, on Jamaica, but if everybody would contribute a little, mm -hmm. Jamaica would be a very, very far, far, far away, uh, away now. Yeah. Well, well, this gets into uh, um, our discussion about your role as the uh, president and founder mm -hmm. of, of Help Jamaica Medical Mission. Uh, and l let's talk about that. Um, you're you're uh, uh, the president and the founder. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you tell me how you got started with how the got help started. Jamaica? Interesting question. Um, many years ago, um, I was invited to become a member of what we call the Caribbean Medical Mission. That's another mission that does a lot of. Um, um, positive volunteer work all over the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so I was a member, a very active member of the Caribbean Medical Mission. And the mission was to go to, through all the Caribbean countries and, and also in New Jersey, you know, to give back, to do volunteer work, you know, treat the underserved, the sick, and, and so forth. And during my journeys, you know, as going back to different countries, you know, which I was very proud to do, and mm -hmm. I'm still uh, I'm a part of that organization. It dawned on me that, wow, um, we haven't been to Jamaica for years, and there is, in fact, a need um, to uh, go to Jamaica on a yearly basis. So by the time you went to several different um, uh, Caribbean countries, by the time you get back to Jamaica, it's probably a few years, four, five, six years, and I, w I didn't accept that, you know. Mm -hmm. I figured that there was a need to go to Jamaica on a yearly basis, and um, and that's when the idea popped in my head that well, maybe we ought to form a mission that goes strictly to Jamaica, and um, and so that's how the idea was born. And I, I quickly called Dr. Willis, who has been my mentor and also my physician for many years, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I sold the idea to him, and he finally agreed, and we we got together, and uh, you know, we. We founded uh, Help Jamaica, and we've been going. And that this was about uh, January of 2010. And since then, we've been going doing many missions to Jamaica. We've done six missions mm -hmm. to Jamaica so far. Uh, this since, is since uh, since 2010. Since 2010. Yes. yes. So we've, we've gone back every year. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, um, whenever you go, we go to about seven or eight sites, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, we see approximately at each side, you know, four or five hundred people. Mm -hmm. um, when you average, when you do the averages, about four to five. Some sites you see a little bit more, some a little bit less. I remember one year we saw over a thousand people at wow. one site. Mm -hmm. And our, our motto is um, not to leave anybody, un, you know, mm -hmm. not seen. And so we always um, um, keep keep the doors open until the last person is seen. We, we never turn anybody back. So if it means staying there till one, two, three in the morning, we do. Mm -hmm. Of course, some people get you know very tired and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But we have, for the most part, everybody has endured, you know, and and I've I've stuck through it till till the end until every, everybody is seen. Okay, so we're we're going to take a break right now. Uh -huh. But but when we come back, I want to talk more about uh, the Help Jamaica Medical Mission. Okay, I want to talk about. Uh, some of the specific missions that you've been on. You've, you've given me some general ideas, but sure. I wanted to get into uh, some specific uh, uh, experiences that might have uh, stood out for you. Okay.
We'll be right back. My name is Miss Beverly Burton, and I am the music, choir, and piano director here at the Garvey School. Here at Garvey, we make sure the children learn the foundation of music, which is music theory. And um, we want them to just have that understanding so that when they do go out into the world and they do apply to different music schools, that they will get in and they will be assured a position wherever they go. Velma Murray, our technology specialist here at Garvey School, brings a professional experience of writing programs for Apple and other major companies in the field. And here, a retiree, she brings this experience and this passion to teach children how to write programs because she believes, as we do, that not too long from now, there'll be two primary groups, the consumer, of technology and the producer of technology. My name is Kevon and I'm a sixth grader at the Garvey School. What's cool about art in the Garvey School is that it's very creative and there's many different things that you could learn like clay, like I think three years back we did some mud cloths that we painted on cloths with mud and we also do a lot of painting which is my favorite but I like clay the most. I believe that the impact that the arts has on a child is, is actually very vast. I think that a child that experiences particularly drama at a young age tends to become a lot more confident, particularly in public speaking. The important aspect of theater that helps kids in working together is this fancy term I like to call the ensemble. And basically an ensemble is a group of people working together to put on a production of any kind. They are the kids that are helpful, they're critical of each other, but they also are very supportive. And that's the type of environment that I want. Okay, that's how we're gonna do, okay? Eliana Braz is a talented violinist who often plays to audiences at Carnegie Hall as well as the subway. And uh, he brings a passion and love for music, for the art uh, that these children will probably not see very often. And exposing them to the arts gives them opportunities to see where their talents lie. Who knows? And we're back with Dr. Robert Clark, mm -hmm. the president and founder of Help Jamaica Medical Mission, and also the executive vice president of the National Association of Jamaican and Supportive Organizations. Dr. Clark, we were talking about uh, Help Jamaica Medical Mission and the missions that you have undertaken uh, since beginning mm -hmm. this effort in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, in the past uh, year, you know, the, today being uh, February or actually it's March, March uh, 27th. How many, how many missions do you well, we have done? Okay, yeah, we have done approximately um, six missions mm -hmm. since 2010. But, um, but per year, how? how well, we do, yeah. well, we, well, yes, we do one mission per year. However, mm -hmm. um, when you go to a site, you know the people that first year. Mm -hmm. You try to do follow up the next year because you know clearly you give out lots of medication, mm -hmm. and we try to do follow ups the next year to see how they're doing. And also, we tell th them to follow up with their local clinics. Okay. Now here's one. Here's the here's a caveat, and here's one of the um, challenges that we have with that. 
is that the, the, the communities that we target, okay, are the people who will otherwise not go out to see a doctor. So we try mm -hmm. to, to, to target, you know, the, that population who, for some reason, whether it be being poor, can pay a fear to go to the doctor, whether it be, you know, knowledge, you know, lack of knowledge or lack of whatever. So what we do is we try to target those areas that are kind of way out and really deep so we go to those areas and we see those patients that particular year, we do follow up the next year, and again, tell them to follow up with their local clinics or a private doctor. So do you, are Often, you so, but are you able to uh, stay in touch with the, the people? I mean, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. The, which are you are able, you're able to stay yes, in touch with well, those well, people and follow up with them? Well, here's the deal. So what we do is, um, we, we follow up the next year, but also what I do personally um, on my own being, mm -hmm. I go to Jamaica a um, few more times, mm -hmm. maybe five, six times for personal follow-up. So what I do is we have a subset of those population that are ex that we re extremely sick that I pay cl very close attention to. Mm -hmm. So I usually take their numbers, address, and everything, and we do follow-ups. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a chief liaison officer in Jamaica, Ms. Norma Russell, who she's our local contact, our local liaison. So she has an active list mm -hmm. of all the people that we target, you know, that we really need to do close surveillance of. You know, we can't do it with everybody, but we, like I said, we do a subset. So I do that about four, five, six times a year. I go down and personally... Um, see as much as I can get to, but at the same time, we do encourage them mm -hmm. to follow up with their local docs and their local clinics. B mm -hmm. But in the event that anybody slips through the crack, you know, we really try to see how much we can catch, you know, from falling through the cracks. So, so, but now, what range of services or you know, conditions do you uh, okay. treat? Yes. Okay. Health uh, the, um, illnesses that we see is is mainly diabetes, mm -hmm. hypertension, allergies, infections, and um, um, congestive heart failures. We see, we see tons of that. Um, we see a lot of people coming in with hernias, mm -hmm. um, whether it be umbilical or inguinal, meaning in the groin, you know, and, and those are mainly, I mean, we have, we have, we have diagnosed tons of diabetes, new onset, mm -hmm. and um, new onset hypertension. I mean, people are, are going, uh, walking around with unbelievable mm -hmm. blood sugars, as high, mm -hmm. as close to being comatose, mm -hmm. and yet <laughs> they look normal just like you mm -hmm. and me, and people with blood pressures that are so unbelievably high, you wonder how they stand, mm -hmm. how they function, how they think, mm -hmm. you know? And um, as if it's, it's well. nothing going on. So we have diagnosed quite a few of those. And some, mm -hmm. of, a lot of these Sur we surgeries over. too. Now, I recall mm -hmm. uh, actually writing an article mm -hmm. about uh, mm -hmm. a surgery that was done. Yes. You, uh, now, how often do you do surgeries? Is we do surgeries um, sometimes two or three times a year, depending mm -hmm. on, on, on how simple or complicated it is. But we not only do local surgeries, what we try to do it's people who cannot afford certain types of surgeries. We would uh, fly them up mm -hmm. to New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we would accomplish their surgeries for mm -hmm. them. In fact, I can remember about two years ago, there was a guy that approached me who had, um, he was on a dialysis, he was a renal patient, mm -hmm. and um, he had a, a coronary artery diseases. He had one stent um, placed. And, you know, he was having dire chest pains, and he told me that the doctors said they couldn't do anything else. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean they couldn't do anything else? All they have to do is go back. He said, no, doctor. I said, I said, okay. And what I did was I flew him up, okay, and I brought him to my hospital, mm -hmm. one of the hospitals that I worked at, mm -hmm. and we actually had a cardiologist evaluated him and um, found out that he had... Um, uh, two of his, his arteries were blocked, so he was this close mm. to being dead. And, no uh, charge. No charge. And mm -hmm. what we did was we went in, we put some stents in, mm -hmm. and uh, he was admitted for 
about three, three to four days mm -hmm. at no charge, all of the expense That's of right. Help Jamaica Medical Mission. Mm -hmm. We was done, flew back to Jamaica, and he's been fine since. No, no, that's great. That's great. Now, when when your team actually goes in, mm -hmm. how many how many doctors, how many nurses, how many? Because you're seeing an awful lot of people. Yes. So our team is fairly, fairly, fairly large. Um, it is. It can range from anything, anywhere from between thirty to forty of us. Doctors, and, or it's, and it's not just doctors. It's a combination because. Mm -hmm. We can't do it by ourselves, so we mm -hmm. need a support staff. We need nurses, you know. We need mm -hmm. medical assistants. We need um, logistics people. We need computer. What about people, supplies? How, how much? How, what about supplies? You bring supplies. We bring supplies. In fact, when and we what's go the down, cost of the supplies? Oh, boy, I mean, it's the, a the lot. Supplies can run us over a hundred thousand U.S. Wow. And and we're talking about inclusive of eyeglasses because mm -hmm. we bring thousands of eyeglasses as well. Um, tons of medication. In mm -hmm. fact, the last mission we had, we had 45 boxes, mm -hmm. huge boxes, with mm -hmm. medication and eyeglasses. 45 boxes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I will personally take this opportunity to thank Caribbean Airlines, mm -hmm. who has really assisted us over the years, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, with bringing down you know, m most of these medications. So they, they do it at no cost? Yes, wow. they actually really help us out. So how, is it, how, how, do, you, how do you have any problems getting through customs? Or? No, no we yeah. don't actually. The government has been very forthcoming. They've been very, very supportive of us. And um, we, we really have not had any issues with bringing in our supplies in, into the island. Wow, yeah. so that is fantastic. Yeah. Um, Something else I wanted to, 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 to ask you about uh, the medical missions now, this is an enormous amount of money. How, how are you raising this money? How, how, uh, how is this money okay. coming about? Well, let me take off my presidential hat mm -hmm. and let me put on my chairman of fundraising hat. Okay. Because I'm also the chairman of fundraising. And what we do is we have about five fundraisers each year. Mm -hmm. um, right now there's one going on. We have an, you know, opportunity drawing that we do. Um, we have a, a boat ride, we have a backyard barbecue, we have uh, a black tie affair, we have a New Year's Eve ball. So it's about five events and with all those, these five events we, we make quite a lot of money. In fact, well, uh -huh. yes, we, 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 uh -huh. see we have a, a group that really works mm -hmm. and um, they assist me in, in raising the funds. Mm -hmm. And you know, we we in fact in the boat ride, we every year we have close to five six hundred people, mm -hmm. as well as our black tie. So mm -hmm. we we do pretty decent in raising the funds um, to support ourselves. Well, I would be remiss to say that you know I haven't attended because I have attended your picnics. Yes. I have attended the the black black, black tie affair. Yes. I've yeah. I've covered your fairs. And 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 while we're on that subject, because I am the uh, public relations officer for Naja, so I'm, yeah, yeah. I am somewhat aware, but I, for my viewing audience, I have to also make them aware yes. of the fact that this is how you're going about raising this yes. hundred thousand yeah. uh, dollars or the monies and that you uh, need for this 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 mission. Mm -hmm. um, how do you determine uh, which parishes, parishes that you will serve? How do, okay. how do you determine that? There are several criteria. Um, first, you have to be well underserved. And, mm -hmm. and it has to be, like I said, we try to target the people who really need it the most. And so what happened is, believe it or not, um, a lot of people in Jamaica know about us. So what they do is they, they sometimes make requests um, for us to come to their areas and that's what has been done uh, most of the years. Sometimes we have more people that we can actually serve so we just um, we meet um, with our boards and then we select the areas that we think needs it the most. Not to say that we will push the other people under the rug, no, we just mm -hmm. defer for another year but uh, that's pretty much how we do. So people make their requests and we evaluate um, who is, you know, which heirs is most in need at that particular time. And then, then we go there free of cost. You know, the only thing we require 
is somewhere to set up, like if it's a church, you know, mm -hmm. we use the church for that particular day set up and we have, you know, private areas so we can see our patients, that's mm -hmm. all, you know, but uh, everything and some, and, and one thing I must say, what we have done over the years too is that we have actually, most of the years, not all, but most of the years we go, we also try to feed the people. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. out of our own pockets, you know, mm -hmm. because that's also a passion of mine. I don't like to see people coming in and sitting down, waiting to see the doctor, and they're hungry, and, mm -hmm. you know, we're having lunch, and they're mm -hmm. looking at us having lunch. I, I, that's mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. really bores me. Lots of times I've actually given away my lunch to mm -hmm. people, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I, I just I, I, mm -hmm. I can't stand seeing people not, you mm -hmm. know, having food to eat. So what we try to do, and we've implemented, is that we try to, as much as we can, provide food or little snacks mm -hmm. for people and refreshments, you know, when they come out to see us. Okay. Now, I wanted to um, uh, address um, uh, the aspect of your medical mission. Is there, is there any particular uh, mission that you've gone on that uh, has, that stands out, and I also want to know: Do you go on your medical missions at a certain time every year? Is it the same? Yes. In fact, yeah. we go the first Wednesday of every September. Okay. And we stay for up to two weeks. We go to about, like I said, anywhere from really seven to nine sites. Okay. So we really work extensively. We may have one or two breaks in between, but you know, if, if we if we would finish a mission at a particular site, one, two, three in the morning, we still have to get up maybe five in the morning, six, because mm -hmm. you know, we have people who give us a wake up call, bang on our doors at a certain time at about six. So no matter what time we go in, mm -hmm. you know, we have to get up at a certain time that next day mm -hmm. to go out and serve the people. But you know, we get tired, yes, but at the end of the day, our solace is that we're helping people, number mm -hmm. one, and number two, it's only for about a week or two, so we, okay. we, we tough it out. Okay, uh, so September is the, is the time frame. Yes, um, the and first Wednesday yeah. in, in okay. September. And so, is there a particular mission that you've been on that uh, stands out the most in your mind? Is there? Yes, there's this particular mission that really had me, and I remember we went to this particular area, and there was this 21-year-old guy who came up to us and um, he had a huge mass in his scrotum and he wanted help. I mean, he was having so much pain, he was crying. And, um, you know, he said if we could help him because he's gone to the local docs and they've given him about a seven month waiting list, which I couldn't understand, but, you know, I'm still trying to understand. And so he wanted us to help. And he was crying for us to help. So, you know, I asked one of our surgeons, Dr. Constable, to evaluate him. And he decided that um, if not treated immediately, um, this guy could actually end up not ever having kids. This, this, this wasn't the bus driver? Was no, it no, wasn't the bus driver. Okay, because I know that was the story that I wrote. No, about. that was okay. another one. Okay. You know, this one is actually, uh, to me, because of the guy's age, more touching than the, the bus driver story. Because mm -hmm. he was young, his mm -hmm. whole life was ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And to have mm -hmm. such a score of hernia that it was, it, it was threatening your actual reproductive ability, mm -hmm. and uh, I just couldn't, I, I, I couldn't um, deal with that. And so, as I said, I called a surgeon who evaluated him, and we both decided that if this guy don't have surgery, immediately he might never be able to have a child. So you did it? So we did it. All right. You That's know, good. We did it. And okay. he was happy. We followed up on him. He's fine. Happy. Wow. You still in touch with him? Go. Yes. Uh, about, well, actually about a year ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Clark, we're, we're going we're gonna to take another break. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Uh, that's a great story. Thank you. Uh, when we come back, I want to, I want to talk about your role in the JASO okay. because Help Jamaica Medical Mission is a member organization of, of the, the JASO. JASO. Absolutely. And uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, okay. we'll be right back.
My name is Crystal Allen. I am the lead UPK teacher at the Garvey School. We are learning a lot about ourselves, um, our favorite things, people in our family, um, the people around us in our communities. From this domain, I want my students to just become more in tune with themselves, to learn about themselves, learn about other people. Hi, my name is Jill Moody, and I am the drama and dance teacher here at the Garvey School. It shall be named Bottom Jill. What's unique about the Garvey School is that these children are so ready to learn and be exposed to new things. So I came in this fall with Shakespeare, and you would never expect second, third, or even fourth and fifth graders to be reading Shakespeare, nonetheless performing it. We do three languages here, French, Spanish, and Mandarin. So it's not unique here to hear children saying hello in these three languages. Mr. Matez is a native Costa Rican who brings his entire life story into the classroom. It's fascinating to children, and that allows them to develop a native interest in the language. When our children go into the cafeteria, it's an experience. They go in to dine, they're serving themselves, they're serving other people at their tables. Our children dine specially because they're eating good foods. Here at the Garvey School, we're nurturing a spirit of excellence. And we're back talking to Dr. Robert Clark, uh, president and founder of Help Jamaica Medical Mission, and also the executive vice president of the National Association of Jamaican and Supportive Organizations, otherwise known as NAJASO. Uh, Dr. Clark, let's, let's talk about NAJASO. Okay, now, what is your role as the executive vice president? As the executive vice president, <clears throat> one of the roles that has been uh, entrusted on me is a strategic membership drive. And um, uh, NAJASO has always been an organization that um, as you know, is the umbrella organization that has quite a number of membership. And um, over the years, um, Nadessa had, from what I understand and what I've read, had you know over 100 plus member organizations throughout the whole United States, Bermuda, and, and so forth. And you know the membership has dwindled, you know, over the years. Uh, I don't know if it's lack of leadership or whatever the, the situation is. I don't know, but. Um, and so it's been dwindled. And so uh, when my role was created and I was voted into that position, one of the things that I saw was the need um, to not just bring back the old members, but to also get new members, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and so we have, we have started a membership drive. We have had a few members so far, but we're still below our potential. And mm -hmm. uh, there was just a lot of room to grow. And for those of you who is watching this broadcast, you know, if you're other, you're, if you're Jamaican organizations, um, you know, we're inviting you to become members. Uh, we're one big family and, um, you know, we are all in this, you know, to help Jamaicans and to help the diaspora. Well, you know, for those that don't know, because there are people don't know what uh, uh, the National Association of Jamaican Supportive Organizations is, and you know what services they provide. Could you talk about what the, the organization yeah. does in, in providing its services? Well, uh, again, NADASA is an umbrella organization for other organizations. And what we pride ourselves in doing um, is to helping local organizations and also organizations in Jamaica, also um, you know, entities like basic schools and you know, whoever that needs the help. You know, we try to offer scholarships like the Marcus Garvey scholarships. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to improve basic schools. We try to give uh, amenities that they need to mm -hmm. help their infrastructure, you know, books, bags, mm -hmm. you know, to the poor, you know. So the range is, is education? Education and just, yeah. I mean, you've already heard about health. Health. You know, which is, that was a health uh, part of it. And, and the other part, like I said, is, is, is education. Try to make sure that people um, I mean, we can't help everybody, but at least we try to identify areas that are really in dire need of help, you know. 
maybe a student does not have a shoe to go to school, mm -hmm. can't afford the books, can't afford this. So we try to help mm -hmm. as, as much as we can. Okay, so Najaso as an organization um, does uh, its uh, uh, efforts to, to, to assist those in need. Um, do you see the organization uh, evolving more in the future or expanding to include other areas of service? For, for example, I'm, I'm making reference to, to, to uh, business and, and growth and uh, do you see Najaso as an organization that can uh, offer support in, in business and in economic growth and trade and, yes. and identifying uh, entities mm -hmm. in the diaspora that uh, could could help in, in that area because that's the focus of the government right. right now. It's interesting that you ask that question because I know you and I have, have had some sidebar talks about this and yes that is one of the focus that NAJASA uh, in the future um, should do and I hope it is done and this is why um, as executive vice president uh, we're having our elections um, the 40th, and uh, it is my intention to run as the president mm -hmm. for Najasa, mm -hmm. because I think that we are way beyond the, uh, be be below our potential, mm -hmm. and and there's a lot that needs to be done, and a lot that we are not focusing on, mm -hmm. that we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Priorities are not in the right places, and you know I I I I, I want to offer my services and my leadership so that we can change that, that we can mm -hmm. go in the right direction. And again, you and I have uh, discussed that. And I see tremendous growth, tremendous mm -hmm. potential. Well, because we are the umbrella organization. Mm -hmm. We are the only official organization mm -hmm. of the Jamaican diaspora. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to bring that to the forefront. There are so many things that we were um, mandated to do mm -hmm. um, with Honorable um, Rattree where this was founded that we're not doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to. For example, you know what's going on with immigration. Mm -hmm. um, we also need to try to represent you know, mm -hmm. our own in terms of their, their future as mm -hmm. illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. They need to be, um, you know, they need a voice. Mm -hmm. And this is one way that I think that JASA um, can lend their support. Well, you mentioned the uh, conference. Do you want to talk some more about that, the conference that uh, mm -hmm. is going to be held in July? Yeah, we, uh, yes, the, the for 40th convention um, is going to celebrate our 40th year of existence and, 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 and founding. And um, um, it, it will be held in Jamaica from July 13th to the 15th mm -hmm. of this year. Mm -hmm. And during that time, um, we're going to be having several workshops. We're going to be mm -hmm. having workshops in health, education, business, mm -hmm. um, immigration, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, uh, Workshops to include our young professionals, both mm -hmm. at home and abroad, you know, in, in the diaspora. And I'm looking forward to that. There's mm -hmm. also going to be election of members, mm -hmm. uh, I mean officers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, executives mm -hmm. and board of trustees members. And um, again, I am offering myself mm -hmm. um, as president of mm -hmm. this organization because I think have a lot to bring to the table, a lot of experience, which is mm -hmm. what it needs, positive leadership, and um, mm -hmm. somebody's not af af afraid to stand up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that, that, that was uh, interesting. Do, do, where do you see uh, the, the areas? Well, you, you did make reference to uh, some characteristics mm -hmm. of leadership needed. Um, where, where do you think that uh, the greatest uh, focus needs to take place right now? Well, we, we have to remember why we were, we're, you know, why we were formed to begin with. We are here to represent the Jamaican diaspora. That's who we are, an umbrella organization. Mm -hmm. These are people that we represent and we have to work for, you know, we have to mm -hmm. earn our right as being that umbrella organization, mm -hmm. okay? Now, some of the organizations will ask, well, why do I need to become a member of you? Why do I need you mm -hmm. to help me? And that's a good question, you know. United we stand, 
the vital V4. And we, as umbrella organizations, um, we are here to lend a hand. We are here, we have services that you may not have in your organization, such as legal services, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that we intend to definitely offer um, mm -hmm. substantially in the future. You know, we need to help organizations to help themselves in terms of, you know, showing them how to really resource funds, fundraise, you know, and, and you know, to be as much as they can uh, in terms of being totally independent, mm -hmm. you know. So and, um, you know, this is something that I think that JASA, um, we're like a big brother, so mm -hmm. to speak. We offer guidance. We lend a helping hand. Mm -hmm. If you're broke, we'll help you. Okay. Okay. So getting, okay, so, we're, so in light of this convention, um, you're, uh, you'll be on a panel, of course. Absolutely. Uh, have you determined what that panel will address at this point in time? Have you Well, Dr. Willis is the chairman of the health panel. Mm -hmm. And I am just a member of his panel, so he decides mm -hmm. um, what areas he's going to um, be dealing with. I know one of the areas that we're going to be focused on is, I think, drug abuse and, um, and psychiatric issues. Okay. And, yeah. um, because I know you know, uh, you're aware of some of the stuff going on now, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is beyond anybody's apprehension Kay. that's going on. I don't know if, if it's drugs, it's I don't know. Right. Really. We, we are trying to get to the bottom of some of these health issues, mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out what, you know, why some people do what they do. And I don't need to be explicit on the air. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people right. are aware of some of the things mm -hmm. that are going on. So we are trying to focus on some of those issues. Now, um, in particular, because uh, the, the, uh, the, the health system in, in Jamaica mm -hmm. is, is not, um, sub, it's not up to par in terms of being uh, on the level of a first world country. Mm -hmm. Do you see any focus or attention um, that in your role that you would want to drive, you know, any focus or effort to improve Jamaica's health care system? Uh, well, is, is that something that is, uh, you think, in the range of, of Najasa's capability? Absolutely. Like I said, Najasa. Um, is the official diaspora organization. We have tons of talents in the organization. We have very bright minds. We have um, very experienced individuals, experts in their fields, law enforcement, immigration, business development, you know, not to mention healthcare. And of course, there's, we are untapped. And there are quite a number of adv you know, advice if the government wants it, you know, we have untapped um, resources and potentials that they can uh, we can offer, but they will. I mean, we 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 lend a, we we'll, we'll extend our, our olive branch or we mm -hmm. we can uh, extend a hand, but it's up to the, the the Jamaican government to accept our ideas and to accept the help because of course we're Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. We're Jamaicans. We're just Jamaicans living abroad. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're as much Jamaicans. And there's more of us <laughs> out here <laughs> than there is. Absolutely. <laughs> At home, yes, and and in, in a lot of cases, we're a little bit, you know, in a in a in a in a, in a position where we can turn back and give back. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to abandon our country. We we want to be still be a part of our country. We still want to be a part of its development. And if only, you know, our voice can be heard, and it will be heard at some point, which is one of the reasons why I need I I, I am running for president of Najasa because. We have to engage the government. They have to know that, look, we are the diaspora. We are here to help. We're not here to break you down or to lead you in the wrong direction. Not that you need our leadership, but no man is an island. No man stands alone. I don't care who you are. You know, mm -hmm. everyone needs a little help in other times, a little guidance 
little expertise. And believe me, in the diaspora here, especially in Najasa, we have untapped potential. You know, I mean, there are people in Najasa that I'm, I'm getting to know since I, 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 I came on board that just listening to them, they have so much to offer to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's one person in mind that I'm thinking about, you know, and a boy, I, I spoke to him the other day on the phone, and this guy, he's one of the founding members of Najasa. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I respect him tremendously, and he has so much mm -hmm. that he could offer if only given the chance. chance. You know, our elders, mm -hmm. we have to look up to them. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the sure. things I always like to do growing up is to listen to my grandmother, my mm -hmm. granddaddy, because they had so much knowledge to depart, to impart mm -hmm. on us mm -hmm. and to teach us values, mm -hmm. yeah, their experiences. Mm -hmm. It's good to learn from the elders. Yes, and mm -hmm. it's good to listen. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't do, listen. And listen mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. A good listener, a good listener, okay, mm -hmm. achieve a momentum mm -hmm. of things in life. Mm -hmm. That's very much mm -hmm. very important. Well, well, I certainly, I want to I wanna wish you a, a lot of luck in your run for, for president. Thank you. I, you know, I've uh, enjoyed working with you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do too. I um, certainly uh, think what you're doing with the Help Jamaica Medical Mission mm -hmm. is outstanding. Thank you. Um, you know, as I, I'll repeat, I did write an article about mm -hmm. one of the amazing yes. um, uh, missions that you did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that's wonderful. I hope someday I will be able to, to go along. Yes. You know, now that I know it's September every year, yes. um, I have to plan that's for right. that. Absolutely. So uh, that's, that's, that's great, the work that you're doing uh, with the medical missions and, mm -hmm. and also uh, with Najaso. So um, I, wa I want to thank you for, for coming. My pleasure. And for spending this time on the Absolutely. Jamaica Diaspora Show. Thank you. Um, I, I want you to come back again. I, I, I will. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be looking uh, for you um, to be an impact in the organization um, in the future more. Uh, and uh, thanks again for, for stopping by. My, my pleasure. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. And that's it for the Jamaica Diaspora Show, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back next week. Thank you for joining us.